Welcome to this section on load balancing, in which we're going to start to spread the load across multiple EC2 instances. So what is load balancing? Well, first of all, load balancers are basically servers, and they forward internet traffic to multiple downstream servers, in our case, EC2 instances. So here's what it looks like. We have, say, three EC2 instances, and they all run the same application. Now in the middle, we'll set up a load balancer. And what this load balancer does is awesome. Say there's user one, and user one connects to the load balancer. Now, as we'll see, the load balancer will just be a URL like any other website. But what the load balancer will do is that it will transmit that request to an EC2 instance. For example, the first one. The EC2 instance will come back with a response to the load balancer. And once the response is good, the load balancer will forward that response to user one. So as you see, user one does not directly connect to your EC2 instance, but the load balancer does. Now, if you look at user two, it will connect to the load balancer and the load balancer, instead of using EC2 instance one this time, will be using EC2 instance number two. For user three, you'll get EC2 instance number three. Now you can see, you can have a thousand user and say five EC2 instances, but the whole purpose of the load balancer in this case is really to balance the load across many EC2 instances for you. The advantage of this is that now you can start scaling your application. So why would you use one? Well, you want to spread the load across multiple downstream instances. You also want your users to only have one point of access to your application, one URL. It's called DNS name. You want to seamlessly handle failures of downstream instances. If one of EC2 instances crash, you don't want the load balancer to start forwarding traffic to it. You want to do regular health checks to your instances so that your load balancers know which ones are healthy. You want to provide SSL termination or HTTPS for your websites at the load balancer level. You want to enforce stickiness of the request. I mean, the same user will always go to the same EC2 instance using cookies. You want to have high availability across availability zones. And finally, you want to separate public traffic from private traffic. So a lot of reason why you would want to use a load balancer. Now, why use an EC2 load balancer? Well, an ELB stands for EC2 load balancer. It's a managed load balancer. That means AWS manages for you. AWS guarantees that it will be working. They take care of upgrades, maintenance, and high availability, meaning it will never crash. And then AWS provides a few configuration knobs or tools for you to specify how you want that ELB to work. Basically, using a managed ELB, it will cost less for you than setting up your own load balancer. Because in the end, if you set up your own load balancer, it will cost less at first, but then there will be a lot of effort for you to scale and manage that load balancer. Finally, using an ELB will make sure that it is tightly integrated with all the AWS servicing and offering. So services and offering. So basically you're in good hands. Now, what are the types of load balancers on AWS? AWS has three kinds of load balancers. The number one is the classic load balancer, and that's the most common one. It's called V1 or all generation, and it's from 2009. The number two is application load balancer. It's V2, it's newer generation, and it's 2016, so pretty recent. And honestly, I haven't seen any courses that talk about those. Finally, there's the network load balancer, even more recent, 2017. It's also V2, the newer generation. And again, I've never seen any other course that will talk about those. Overall, we are going to use the newer V2 generation load balancer, and they're more recommended. They provide more features, but in this course, we'll see all of them, the classic, the application, and the network load balancer. Finally, on AWS, you can set up an internal load balancer for your internal applications, or an external load balancer for your public applications, meaning applications users on the web can access. So I hope you're excited. Hope that was a good overview. And in the next lectures, we're gonna see how to do classic application and network load balancer.